Oh, the fun continues. So Pythagorean theorem, talking about the hypotenuse. So this video hopefully won't be too long, although I do wanna go over a couple of examples. And for any student in grade nine in high school, you probably at some point have gotten into or run through the Pythagorean theorem in elementary school. So this might be a review, but I do not know if they actually told you kind of how it was related and how Pythagorean kind of uh, thought about this problem. So Pythagorean theorem deals, deals with triangles and in particular with right angle triangles, which means that this angle right here that we designate with the little square is 90 degrees and it's only for 90 degree angles. Now it gives you a relationship between this side, this side, and then your hypotenuse and your hypotenuse is that side right there. And I'm gonna designate it as C. And now A, B, and C are simply the lengths of each side. And what this Pythagorean theorem states is, it says that the hypotenuse, if you square it, is equal to A squared plus B squared. So if you do not know one of these sides, then you can find, find them if you know the other two. Now, with your hypotenuse, okay, and your two other sides, how this has come up and why these actual squares are here is actually pretty interesting. So if you take, and I'm gonna redraw here our triangle. So let's say I have my triangle. I'm gonna make it a little bit maybe smaller, okay, in this case. And what happens is that the C squared, A squared, and B squared actually came from areas. So you can attach a square to each side. So for example, if I wanted to, so if I take this right here, okay, and I draw a square, let's see. So now I'm gonna attach it right on, okay, and so we have a square right here, and we said that this was the length Okay, it was A. Now, because it's a square, this also is A, which means that your area of this squared is simply A times A, which is A squared. So notice A squared here. Now, if you do the same thing, so I'm gonna change color here, and I draw another square attached to the side, which is B. So let me adjust it a bit. So now, because this is B, and again, the area of this, and because it's a square, this would have been B times B, which is B squared. All right. So it is interesting to note that here, when we draw the hypotenuse, and then we try to, now this is going to look a, probably a little bit weird. Let's see if it does it. Okay, so there we go. All right. And I'm going to have to extend this a bit just so that it covers the whole thing. So notice that is your last triangle. Yeah, sorry, the last square. I'm going to try to bring this down here so that we can see it. And here, this was C. And of course, this was C. So the area was C squared. So the hypotenuse and the Pythagorean theorem how it relates things is basically to the areas of the squares that are attached to the triangle sides, which is pretty neat. And that's what we have right here as our relationship. Now, this relationship Pythagorean has proven, and it's actually way, way back. So this came, I think, uh, probably in B, BC 500 or 600, something around there. So it's quite a while back, okay, that this has come up. And it is pretty useful. Now, in school, we typically use it for kind of pedagogical examples, so kind of school-related examples, but you can certainly use the Pythagorean theorem um, to your advantage, right? 
So if you're going to be crossing a field, for example, it's much easier to cross it on the diagonal because you know that it's going to have a much shorter distance than going around the perimeter. Now, in order to use these, okay, so I can provide you some examples. So if I take a triangle and so let's say, you know, we have a triangle right here. Now, the key important thing is that you do want to see that it is a right angle triangle. So you want to see the square somewhere there. Now, the hypotenuse is always going to be opposite, right? So this is going to be your hypotenuse. And sometimes instead of C, we will write it as H, which just simply means hypotenuse. All right. So if someone gave us the hypotenuse and let's say that the hypotenuse was equal to 13, I'm making this up and it might not be even properly scaled. All right. So if this was that, so let's maybe scale it a little bit oddly like that. And let's say this was nine and you know, this could have been maybe centimeters, centimeters, but it can be inches or anything else. And if you wanted to find out what this last item was, then you can use the formula directly and try to solve for it, which is most of the time what you might start with in high school, okay, or even elementary school to try to work these out. Now there's some harder examples as well, okay, which may be kind of multiple steps. And I'll give you a couple too in this video. So if I wanted to find out, so let me kind of label this out. And, you know, so if say, let's say this was C, let's say this was B, and let's say this was A. So because of the formula, we know that C, so C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, and that was nine. So this is what we're going to have. Now, 13 squared, again, I mean, you can, maybe you might remember, Okay, if not, you might have to take out your calculators. So this is what we have if we square them. Now, if you solve for A, so we're gonna have 169 minus 81. So 169 minus 81, so eight. Okay, so this will be 88 right there. So A squared, and now you're gonna have to take the square root in order to find the a and obviously you take the positive. So this is going to be a and now taking the square root because you have, okay, so this is squared. So in order to get rid of the square, you can take the square root. And once you do that, so in this case, you will get, let's say the square root of 88 and that would be 9.38 and so on. So this would have been nine, do this here, 9.38, and I'm gonna, I guess, round it to three decimal places here. So it's approximately this much, okay? So that's what we have right there. And you can double check it now for yourself. So, you know, you can check, now that you have A, you can say, all right, what is A squared plus B squared and C if it's gonna give you C squared back, okay? So you can check that for yourself and that is how you actually utilize the Pythagorean theorem for triangles, and they are in particular right angle triangle. So here is another nice example if you wanted to step through it. So if someone gives you, let's say a right angle triangle, so let's say it was something like this, I'm gonna prepare it, um, and we wanted to know, so let's say this was 15 centimeters, and this right here is the right angle that we have. And then let's say this was 10 centimeters right here. And now they asked you, what is the area? Okay, so what is the area of the triangle? Now, in order to find the area, you may recall that the area of a triangle is equal to one half base times height. Now, our problem here is we have, we have the hypotenuse, but we don't have the base. We do have, in this case, the height, which is the right here. So we have to find the base B in this example. So this would have been B right here, from here to here. And once we have the base, we can take the height and then we can find the area. So that's kind of a two-step process that you might run into. So let's try it. So in this case, 
So what we have is we know that we're going to have 15 squared is equal to 10 squared plus our base squared. So now I'm going to shift this over to the other side. All right, so 15 squared, that's 225. 10 squared is 100. So when we shift it over, you're going to get that. Okay, and we have, so it's going to be 125. And in order to get B, we have to take the square root. So the square root of 125 equals, so it's approximately 11 point, let's round it. So let's say 11.2, all right? So we have our B, which is 11.2 approximately, and we're dealing with centimeters. So now obtaining the area, well, we can just substitute it back in. So you have one half times your base, 11.2 times your height, which is 10. And there you go. And you can find out what that is. So one half, so that's 0 0.5 times 11.2 times 10 is equal to approximately, okay, so 56 centimeters. And it will be squared because it is an area. All right. So that's a neat example that you may run into. So I'll stop it there. And you can certainly utilize this for many other examples. But the hope is that you, you know, you get familiar with the Pythagorean theorem. And hopefully, you know, you realize that, oh, wait a minute. So it actually came from, you know, noticing a pattern between the areas of the actual squares that are attached to the right angle triangles. All right. So that's what we would have there. All right. So this should have been kind of like that. And then you can do it for the last one. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in a future video. Bye everyone.